Good almost afternoon. We'll just wait a few more minutes for others to join uh, and get started promptly at noon. We'll wait just one more minute just for others to join and get started at noon. Just one more minute to wait. All right, it is now officially noon. So good afternoon to uh, those of you that are joining um, via the webinar and to those of you that are out there um, uh, on audio only on the telephone, welcome all. Um, hopefully you will be able to see my screen and you are in the right place. Um, I do want folks to know that uh, this session is being recorded. Um, you do not have to uh, show yourself by video. You do not have to unmute yourself. So you are welcome to stay that way. Um, or if you object otherwise, um, you can go ahead and exit the webinar now. Um, a few bits of housekeeping as well um, before we get started. Um, I hope that I will answer all of your questions in time. I think I would. Um, but if for any reason that I don't, um, I'll open it up to Q&A at the end. Um, in addition, you can put questions into chat. Please be aware that as the presenter with a, a screen going on, um, I'm probably not going to be able to monitor the chat um, while I am presenting. Um, so if there are any um, moments that there is a problem or sometimes Zoom gets a little angry and there's a delay with she, uh, screen sharing or switching over screen views, um, if someone could uh, please unmute their microphone and just let me know um, whether Zoom is being cranky about switching screens um, and I will try to address that technically for you. So yeah, if you put that in the chat, I won't be able to see it, but if you unmute, I would appreciate that. Um, so let's test that right now. Can everybody see my screen with the notice? Yes, I can okay. see my screen. Thank you, Carly. Okay. So let's get rolling. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick introduction about who we are and what we do. And then we're gonna get um, into the meat of the funding opportunities that are currently opening. Um, and then I'm gonna take a really deep dive into some um, tips and tricks 
um, about the opportunities that we have open, which is the reason why I hope you are on this webinar. So excellent time investment. And I will go ahead and tell you when you need to start taking notes. So um, just for now, a quick introduction of who we are and what we do. Um, the National Space Grant College and Fellowship Program, or what we just like to call Space Grant, um, it's a national program um, funded by Congress and run by NASA. It is a national program. There's one of us in every single state, um, plus DC, Puerto Rico. Um, however, here in North Carolina, we do tailor our programs to the needs of our state um, from an education or um, economic um, or what like aerospace companies are in our state. Um, we're able to tailor it to meet the needs of our own state. Um, and we do so in partnership again with Congress, NASA, the state of North Carolina, um, NC State University, where our offices are, um, industry partners, as well as colleges and universities across the entire state of North Carolina. So it's a really nice, fun, big partnership that we often refer to as a family. Um, so what we do, um, NASA's cool. They do really cool stuff. I don't know if anybody's been seeing like the images um, of the Webb telescope or if anybody's been looking at like the dart rocket that got um, smashed into um, the meteor or if anybody's like us is anxiously awaiting um, the um, Artemis launch. Um, there's all this really interesting, cool stuff that NASA is doing. Um, and so if you're like us and you think what they're doing is cool, or even if you don't really know what NASA does and how it might be relevant to you and your interests, this is what this scholarship is for. So, I mean, in short, we just want you to kind of look at how great NASA's work is, um, and hopefully it will inspire you to become part of a STEM-based workforce. Um, and hopefully you'll do so through some really cool um, hands-on experiential learning or team projects. Um, I do like to joke around that we make astronauts and this is true. There are two astronauts that came out of um, the NC Space Grant Program. Some of you may have heard the name um, astronaut Christina Cook. Um, she's out of NC State. She is now the longest serving um, female up on the International Space Station. Um, she was an engineering student um, over at NC State. And then a name you've not heard yet, but we're hoping maybe one of the first females to step foot on the moon is astronaut Zena Cardman. Um, she was a science geology student over at UNC Chapel Hill. So there are astronauts who have come out of our program, and we're pretty proud of that. Um, but we know that not everybody is going to become an astronaut. Um, I am afraid of heights um, and I'm claustrophobic, and I never want to go up into one of those rockets or on that space <laughs> station. So you may be someone who, like me, is um, awe-inspired by it, but never wants to be uh, going up there themselves. And in which case, like, that's okay too. Look, we know that not everybody's going to become an astronaut, and we even know that not everybody's going to work for NASA. But what we want you to explore are different um, STEM-inspired jobs, right, for the future workforce. And we do that through the fellowships and scholarships that we offer. We do that through the internships with NASA and our corporate partners. Um, and we do that hands-on experiential learning also through team competitions. Um, so I'm hoping that you are on this webinar or call today because you are aware that we have a couple funding opportunities that are currently open. Um, the two that I'm going to deep dive into today are for the MSI STEM Pathways Scholarship Program and the MSI uh, STEM Bridge Scholarship Program. For those of you not um, familiar with the term MSI, it's Minority Serving Institutions. Um, it includes um, tribal universities, HBCUs, um, historically black colleges and universities, and STEM is just a fancy acronym for science, technology, engineering, and math. So just thought I would clarify those acronyms. Um, any of you that are familiar with NASA knows that they love them some acronyms. So 
um, get ready for that. Um, if you are interested and are studying to become a teacher or an educator, there is a pre-service teacher scholarship open and I will briefly touch base on that. Um, or if you'd like to do things as part of a team, there is also um, a team grant that is open and I'm gonna touch base briefly on that. Um, but I'm gonna probably say this about a million times, um, so get used to my nagging. Um, applications are due on Monday the 17th from students and the letters of recommendation um, that you will submit on the, the uh, that your faculty member or an advisor or someone will submit are due the 19th. Um, no late applications are accepted. And if your letter of recommendation is not received on time, then your application will not be reviewed. All right. So that was your stern warning. All right, here we go. So this is a tremendously ugly slide, so bear with me. Um, now you don't have to read the whole thing. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I went over some eligibility with you um, so that you could understand who is eligible um, for which type of scholarship and maybe it'll help you figure that out. So for both the Pathways and the STEM scholarships, you must be enrolled full time um, this semester and next semester. So you have to be enrolled as a full-time student. Um, so what happens if at any time you are not enrolled for full-time because we know life happens and sometimes people's life situations change. At that point, um, you would have to contact us and let us know you're no longer a full-time student. Um, and we would deal with that at the right time. Oops, my bad. Um, so that you know, we, we cross that bridge and we get to it, but just know that you cannot be a part-time student. According to NASA rules, you have to be a full-time student. Okay, so here's where they kind of differ a little bit. So Pathways um, is intended to start you along your academic pathway, right? So that opportunity is open to community college students and all non-senior undergraduates, meaning freshmen, sophomores, juniors, or anybody kind of in between of those phases. Whereas the bridge scholarship is meant to bridge to, to other more intensive research and scholarship opportunities. Therefore, that is only open to sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So where you are along your academic journey may dictate which scholarship you are eligible for. Um, for pathways, we know that um, community college and early undergrads have not yet declared a major. Um, so we're just looking at those who are interested potentially in pur pursuing some kind of STEM related degree. Um, and for the bridge scholars, at that point, we want you quite certain that you are pursuing um, your a, a bachelor's degree in STEM. Um, you may not have to officially declare until your juniors. I know that's the case, for example, at Winston. Um, but we, we want to see from your coursework and your transcript that you're well on your way to uh, pursuing your degree in STEM. Um, I'm not going to read off all the colleges and universities that are eligible. Um, just know that the list that's on the left is slightly longer because that opportunity is open to community colleges. Um, and we get this list from um, NASA. And these are the schools that are targeted by NASA. If you do not see your school listed, um, unfortunately, at this point of time, um, you would not be eligible, um, but send me an email. And if you are indeed at an MSI or an HBCU, um, I will try to encourage your um, college or university to get on NASA's lists. Um, STEM pathways, you are only eligible to receive one because again, it is just starting you out and introducing you to your pathway. Um, bridge people can uh, receive up to two of these scholarships because it will help you as you go to find the type of research and studies um, you want to engage in. Um, both opportunities have a GPA minimum of 2.8 on a 4.0 scale. Um, we do this because NASA's um, typical requirement is a 3.0. However, um, we know that some um, community college students are early undergrads or just starting their studies and are still trying to figure that out as I know I was my freshman year. <laughs> so um, we're giving a little bit more wiggle room um, for you to later get up to a 3.0, but we're starting out on a 2.8. Um, and for both opportunities, you must be a US citizen. If you're not sure, 
If you are, um, I typically ask, you know, do you have a US passport and can you vote in this country? Um, those are the two big ones. So unfortunately, green card holders are not eligible, but um, citizens are. So that is eligibility. Um, application instructions. So I'm going to show you the online system in a little bit, and I'm going to walk you through the entire online application so that you become familiar with it. But please be aware that for both of these, there is um, an online application. And that online application um, asks you for contact information, demographic information, some of your academic background. Um, and I usually tell students to, you know, make sure you don't leave this to the last minute. Um, go ahead and fill all that um, easy stuff out first so that you're not scrambling um, to, to upload um, your essays um, towards the end of the due date period. Um, both will require a, a transcript. Um, it does not have to be official at this time. If you get the scholarship, we will ask you for an official, but if you have plenty of time to get your official transcript, go ahead and get that. That also does have to be uploaded into the system. Um, that helps us verify your GPA as well as, like I said earlier, um, help figure out uh, if you are indeed um, a STEM student. Um, I understand for freshmen and even first year community college students that you do not have a, a university or college transcript yet. We ask that you upload um, your last full completed year of high school um, and that will count um, just to verify um, not your GPA per se, but it'll help us um, along your to understand your academic background, um, coursework and credentials. Um, for the MSI STEM pathway students, you have four short essays with only a 300 word limit. And for bridge, you have six short essays with a 400 word limit. I'm gonna go over some of those um, in a little bit so that you can see them, but I want to, bring this in about the instructions, because when we say short essays, like we mean short essays, like 300 words, 400 words is like a couple paragraphs at best. These are not like big papers that we're asking you to submit or, you know, it's not even like the college essays that you may have written. These are these are short, like couple paragraph questions where you get to talk about like yourself. So when you see something like four essays or six essays, you know, I just, we don't want you guys to panic once you see the essays, which maybe you've taken a look, maybe you haven't and you will on this call. We just want you to feel comfortable that they are, they are not something that you should get stressed out about. They're actually pretty fun. Um, both opportunities require a letter of recommendation. Um, again, for those of you who are freshmen or first year community college students, we understand you have not yet had time to cultivate relationships with, um, your uh, instructors or faculty members. So we will allow for freshmen and first year community college students for you to um, send a letter from a high school educator or employer or somebody similar. Um, but for Pathways, if you are a non-freshman undergrad and you have been in school for you know, a, a while there, um, we expect your letter to be from a faculty member. And I understand it was tricky to kind of cultivate some of these relationships with faculty members um, during COVID, but I'm going to give you some um, tips and stuff on that in just a few minutes, so hang in. But um, yeah, both require letters of recommendation, and um, I will not review your application unless those are there, and you do score points from them, so we just want you to take them seriously, and in a few slides, I will tell you why. So evaluation criteria. Again, I'm not gonna go over um, all of the information on this slide, but what I want you to see and to understand is that we literally tell you where and how you're going to score points for your scholarship application, right? So we've said, here's what you need to kind of focus on and, and write because this is how you're going to be scored. Um, and I am gonna take just, a, just a, um, a quick minute to go over the pathways, including the essays, like as an example, the bridge essays are pretty similar, but we just ask um, a little bit more because again, you're getting like $2,000 more than the pathway students are. So I'm gonna ask you two more questions. Okay, 
So for both of them, academic merit. Again, that's like, what is your GPA? What is your transcripts? Boom, 10 points just for telling us that, right? Easy. And then like for pathways, essay one, right? This is where I'm telling you all, don't panic about these essays. They're kind of fun. Um, so your essay is like, what STEM related classes or degree do you want to study? And like, what interests you about it? So basically like, tell us what makes you curious. Boom, 15 points for telling us what, what makes you curious. Um, essay number two, 20 points. Said it already. We think NASA is pretty awesome. So like, what makes you think it's pretty awesome too? 20 points for telling us what you think is cool about NASA. Um, next one, uh, 20 points is how will this scholarship impact your academic or career pathways? Um, I just wanna give a little clarity about this. Um, yeah, we know that getting um, you know, $3,000 or $5,000 to study is awesome. That's not the story we necessarily want to hear from you. Um, what we would hear is, what we would like to hear is something like, well, if you had $3,000, then you wouldn't have to do a work study so that you could take more time to focus on your classes and you could take more time to meet the requirements of this scholarship, right? So if us giving you a financial incentive alleviates some stress from you in order for you to focus on your studies, like that's a better story than I just want that three grand, right? So we also want to hear like how this scholarship will impact your academic or career pathway in the sense that like, I never even knew scholarships were available for me to study NASA. And like, I'm hearing this and I never thought that was gonna be a possibility for me and here it is, right? So we want your essay to kind of tell us a little bit of a story like that. Um, and then another essay for Pathways, again, similar to um, Bridge, it's kind of like, well, tell us what prepares you to like fulfill your scholarships. Have you had a job? Have you um, mentored high school students? Um, have you worked at a summer camp? Have you had an internship? Are you part of a club? Like what makes you a responsible student who we can trust will fulfill the obligations of your um, scholarship? So similar essays here under the bridge. Again, I'm not gonna go over all of them, um, but you get the hang of it. And here again, you will see the importance of having somebody um, support you through a letter of recommendation. So I'm gonna take a quick minute to talk about that now. So the question is, why is that important, right? Like why, why do I have to get a letter of recommendation that's gonna um, you know, be so many points? And the reason is, is that the research has shown the importance of mentorship in academic and career success. And so we want these scholarships, again, to start your pathway or bridge you to other things through those relationships that you can start to cultivate now. Um, so your applications are due in a few weeks, but you've got two weeks now where you can go to an instructor or a faculty member and say, hey, I learned about this opportunity and I'm really interested in pursuing it. Can you help me figure out um, how to look into NASA? Or will you review my essays for me? Um, if you start cultivating genuine relationships with your faculty, by, um, faculty or instructors, um, most of us are really nice people who got in this field to actually connect to students. And we love when students come to us with passions and interests and motivation. And the more interest and passion a student shows me the, and opens themselves up to me, and the better I get to know them, the easier it is for me to help them and support them um, in their academic and career life. And so again, we want to use this scholarship as an opportunity for you to get to know your instructors and faculty members um, or others a little bit better. And I'm gonna touch on that too um, a little bit later when we talk about requirements. So that's why that's there. Um, all right, application tips. Um, I am going to make a hot mess of this um, and escape out of my screen in a minute. So that's when I'm going to need someone to tell me whether you can see my screen or if Zoom's being a little angry on Monday. But I'm going to go over some of the things that I'm talking um, to you about now. And this is like, this is going to be the start of the point where whether you're typing notes on a laptop 
a laptop or you're old school like me and do pen and paper, um, this is a good point to start taking notes. Um, tip number one, go online and do your homework. Like who is NASA? What do they do? Like what are the different missions? What are the different mission directorates? Um, we've included tons of links on this all over our website and even on our web page um, on the, uh, the where you can click about, and I'll show you that in a sec, where you can click into things about NASA. And so like you've got plenty of time. If you're not sure what you think is cool about NASA, you still have time to figure that out. And we've provided those links to help you. Um, I am going to show you how to look at a sample application so that you can get comfortable with what it is that you have to do before you see it. And I'll tell you where you can find that. Um, tip three, factoring in time to not only write the essays, but complete the required fields in the online application. And again, in just a hot minute, I'm gonna show you that. Um, tip four, I'm gonna show you where the essays are and how to put them into the system. But I often tell students to um, cut and paste the essay questions into a Word document write them there. It is much easier and more comfortable to write them in a Word document. You can share it with people you trust or show your advisor, you can edit it, and then you can always upload um, your essays at the last minute, but it's always easier if you kind of work through it in Word rather than the system first. With that being said, um, for both the um, required fields and the essays, you can save and go in and out of the system um, at your convenience. Um, and then finally, this is to my earlier point, the letter of recommendation is due no less than thir three days after your application is due. So ask nicely now, cultivate a relationship now, and ask them now to write that letter in advance. Um, there's nothing that I find more frustrating than a student who writes me the day before something is due and asks me to do something. Um, when I already have my own workload and I already have my own um, you know, family life and all those things. And I, I can guarantee you that that letter I'm going to write for that student is not going to be as thoughtful as when a student gives me ample time to have a deadline, right? I mean, just like you never want to be asked by a professor, I need this huge essay by tomorrow, right? Faculty members don't like that either. So now is a good time to say, hey, I'm thinking of um, applying for this. Um, this is um, will you write a letter of recommendation for me over the next couple of weeks? I'm going to, I'm going to work through my essays and I'd like to share them with you. And, and then you'll understand why I'm doing this. And then they're, they have, you have a better chance of them writing like a really nice letter for you. So I am going to try to get out of this page and show you the actual websites and systems. So as I do this, this is the point that sometimes Zoom gets a little angry that I, I'm, I wanna change screens. So bear with me. And this is gonna be the time that I'm gonna ask everybody, can you see, if somebody can go off audio, can you see the page now with North Carolina Space Grants web page? Yes, I can see it. Score, thank you, Peter. All right. Okay, so if you have not already clicked through our North Carolina Space Grant um, page, you can just Google NC Space Grant and it'll pop right up. Um, what I'm looking for for you guys to find this is under higher education opportunities. You'll see a drop down um, of all the things. Similarly, if you were to click on this, it would lead, lead you to a page where everything is listed. Um, but right now, here's where you can find these different scholarships. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Pathways um, just because I feel like it. All right, so when you get to Pathways, this is pretty much um, a layout of a lot of the information that I just told you and then some. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time to go through what information you can find on our website. Um, and then I'm gonna walk you through the sample application and everything. Um, so again, this is just, we give you a little bit of background about who we are and what we do and why we're doing this. Um, a list of our objectives, basically why we're doing this scholarship. And I will tell you, and this is a great tip, so write this one down, read these objectives and why we're doing this. Because some of these things might give you a good idea to how to respond to some of those essays. So like, what if I'm saying I want, um, 
you know, I want to expose students to STEM research taking place at your college. Or what if I want students to um, foster an understanding of NASA mission directorates? Like in your essay, you'll be able to say, I want this scholarship because, and maybe tell me some of these objectives that resonate with you. So these objectives are important. Um, and as I've said, we've got gobs of links to NASA stuff. So click through that and get your inspiration. That will be important. Um, award details, um, 3,000 for this one and we give out up to 10. Um, your period of performance by the time um, you finish these, I get them, I read them, we award them. It's basically November through the end of the academic year. Um, eligibility, we walked through that already, but in case you're not sure, it's still up there. Again, more links to NASA, like right there for you. Um, how to apply. This is where I'm going to walk you through in just a minute, but this is just a, a couple quick notes reminding you again that they are due um, Octo uh, Monday, October 17th. Um, it says 6 p.m., but since you are all on this webinar, I will give you the tip that I actually keep it open until about 11 because I don't want any panicky last minute. I can't upload this. I'm stuck in traffic. So it's, it's open a little bit later than 6 p.m. That says if you don't get it in that day, it's not going to be reviewed. So get your stuff done now. Um, this is reminding you that there's essays that you have to address, reminding you that you have to upload a transcript. So go ahead and ask for that now. Um, reminding you there's a letter of recommendation and then telling you about the time I hope to let you know. Um, on this website again, and I'll get back to the online link, which I hope people can't miss because it's right there in big letters with the red star, but there it is. Um, again, here's our essays that we're going to ask you. Similarly, if you're here on this uh, webinar and applying to Bridge, you'll see the six essays. And then here again, we're telling you how we're gonna score points, right? So we're already telling you what we're looking at. And then I'm gonna go over requirements in a little bit, but clearly um, nobody's gonna get money for nothing. We gotta ask you to do something in return. And so here's what we're gonna ask you to do as part of your scholarship. And again, I'll go over that in a few. Um, a few other uh, requirements is this just like how you set up your account to get paid. Um, if you're like me and sometimes you can get headachey and dizzy from reading all this stuff online, you can do like a, a PDF here if you want to print it out. Um, and then if you need to contact me with any questions, my contact information is at the bottom. So that's what the website looks like and all the information that you have, right? Hopefully it's pretty clear. So what I want to do is take you um, to, a, this is the link to the online application system. So if you are a first time user, you would go down here and just create an account like you would any other thing that you got to create an account for, right? So you'll get, you'll do your new user registration, which is your email and you'll create your own password. Um, it's pretty easy. Um, you shouldn't have any problems. If you do um, contact me and let me know. Um, what I do want to show you right now is um, to get you more familiar with what it is you're going to have to do. I want to show you the sample application. So this is what the online system looks like. So I often advise students to go ahead and fill this stuff out. Like today is like a cold, rainy day. Like you're not outside. Take like the 10, 15 minutes and do that. Or, you know, I often tease um, the students that, you know, you could, you could miss looking at like three to five TikToks and take the time to do this instead, right? So it's not too bad, but it does take a little bit of time. So I want to make sure you guys are aware that you've got to put some information in here, like your name and your, all your contact information. Um, we do ask you for your congressional district. If you don't know it, there's a look up here for you. Um, and the reason why we ask this is because, um, you may recall earlier that I said is that we're a congressionally um, authorized and appropriated program that's administered by NASA. So every year I have to go to Congress and tell them uh, um, each representative about all the students in their district uh, rece receiving scholarships and doing great things so that they continue to fund us. Um, so that's why we need that information. And then your educational information. Um, we understand that um, early undergrads in some schools may not have um, 
an academic program or major or minor yet, and that is fine. Um, I have told students in the past, like, if you think you want to study science, just slap science in there. Even if you're not sure if you want to do biology, chemistry, geology, it doesn't matter. If you think you want to do something related to technology, great. If you think you want to do something related to engineering, great. Um, so think about the STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And if you do not have a declared major or program yet, you can just put one of those acronym letters um, right in there. Um, degree sought. Um, so again, I'm in pathways. So you'll see um, if you're a community college uh, student associate all the way up. Um, for obviously for bridge, um, we won't have associates in there. It will say um, sophomore, junior, senior, right? So that will give you an idea of where to kind of what to put for those drop down boxes, right? So seniors aren't allowed to do this one. So freshman, sophomore, junior, um, freshman is fine. If you are a community college student, um, freshman is fine because you are receiving um, a lot of credits that will fulfill that anyway, but you can fill out associates up here. Um, and this is just a quick question, like, are, do you plan on um, pursuing a four-year degree? Yes or no? Again, this is for our information. It will not impact your ability to receive a scholarship. We're just curious. Um, this is where you're going to put your educational history, and this is a sample, so you can't do it, but where you will also upload your transcript. Um, so this is where you can put your community, your current community college or your college or university, or even if um, you are community college or freshman and you're uploading a high school, you can go ahead and put that in here too. Um, so again, like some of you may have a pathway where it's like, um, I went to Edgecombe Community College for two years and you know now I transferred over enough credits to be a junior um, at Winston-Salem. And so you'll put kind of both of those in here. So just make sure you leave yourself enough time to get all this done. The only transcript we are requiring is your most recent one. But if you have them for like, say you went to Edgecombe and now you're at Winston, like you can do that too. Um, so this is where you're gonna put your reference this next session section. So make sure you know your um, references name, title, where they work, how to contact them. Um, and most importantly, their email. Um, when you put that in the system and finally apply, that's when your the person that you've listed at your reference is going to get an email from our system um, saying that you have been requested to submit um, a letter of recommendation. Um, so make sure you tell, again, ask them in advance, right? Um, make sure they know what the deadlines are and let them know to look out for an email from notices at spacegrant.net because that is where they're going to submit information and we don't want them to miss it in their junk mail um, or delete it because they don't know what it is. So make sure you let them know that it is coming. Um, so this is what I was showing you, telling you about earlier where these are where your online essays will go. Now, of course, if you feel like it, you can go ahead and type them out into this and um, just do it that way. Um, I, again, this is a little bit weird. I do find it, it, it's um, a little more helpful to do it in Word first. Um, please be aware that at this time, we are not allowing graphs or photos or anything else, just strict um, essays. So words with word counts. Um, so those are there. So you can, again, if, you, if you're doing it in a Word document, cut and paste it, put them right in these little essay boxes. Um, and I will tell you that at any time you can save your work and then come in and out of the system. So if you write one essay, pop it in, save it and exit, you, you can do that. You don't have to, it's not an all or nothing for an application system. Um, and we've got some questions that just out of our own curiosity, we need to know, um, because again, on, on bridge, you can only get one, I'm sorry, pathways, you can only get one, bridge, you can get two. So we just want to know if you've previously gotten an award. Um, we just need to check that. Um, here's some optional information at this time. We will ask you for this information if you get the award. Um, uh, it does help us to know where you heard about the scholarship from. It just helps us target our marketing better to make sure we're reaching you where you are. Um, 
with the caveat that I am not going to go on TikTok and do some dance or something to get your attention because nobody wants to see that. Um, and then otherwise there are gender, ethnicity and race boxes. Um, and we want to tell you that we fully understand that none of you are check, um, check boxes or radio buttons. Um, these are incredibly old school um, categories laid out by the federal government that we have to respond to, um, to show them that we are accountable and equitable stewards of congressional federal funds. Um, and so that diversity is important to us. And so we track this data, but we fully understand that, you know, many of us are more than these boxes or somewhere in between some of these boxes. Um, so click away if you want to at this time, it just helps us figure out um, whether we're reaching our audiences. Um, but again, it is optional at this time, but it will be um, mandatory if you get a scholarship. And then in the end, you will simply certify that you filled everything out to the best of your ability. Um, you will notice because this is a sample, I don't have all the save and submit buttons at the bottom, hopefully for obvious reasons, because that's a, it's a sample page, you know that, but again, at the bottom, you'll be able to see where you can save and submit. So hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of what is in store for you when you look at the application system. I'm going to briefly scroll back only to show you also so that you're comfortable when you um, when you submit for your letter of recommendation, this is going to be the form that they have to fill out, right? So they're just putting their name and their title and where they work and their contact information. And then the same thing too, only a thousand words, like quick essay right there. So that's what the people you are um, asking to write a letter of recommendation on your behalf, that's what they're looking at. Looking, um, at. So we just want you to know, be fully transparent and um, let, you, let you know that. Hopefully they are not uh, from the middle of nowhere, um, from a non-existent box, but you get the gist. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of what to expect in the system. So I am going to, again, try to switch back over to the presentation. So let me know if this works or if Zoom is angry about my switching. Can somebody please let me know if you can see the PowerPoint again? Yes, I can see them. Thank you, Carly. Okay. So this is the part I was telling you earlier about there's no money for nothing. So there are things that, that we ask of you, but they're actually pretty, um, they're pretty easy and they're pretty fun. So again, the, like one of the objectives of these scholarships is to help you figure out what makes you curious and help you maybe figure out what you might want to study or help you Consider the fact that you might have not have thought that like NASA or aerospace or science or a lab wasn't the right thing for you, but maybe it is. So these scholarships really are an opportunity for you to explore. So I'll tell you how we're going to go about doing that. So um, Pathways gets three grand, um, Bridge gets five, and the reason is we're asking Bridge students to do more, haha, <laughs> but hey, two grand for it is worth it. Um, so both scholarships, um, usually November, December, typically December's because all of us are busy with uh, final exams and the like. Um, we do a fall webinar with one or more NASA professionals. So you will hear from someone from NASA about their own academic and career pathways, what they do for their job, either maybe like what they're researching or maybe if their role is a little bit um, you know, more desk based and administrative, like it's your chance to hear from one or more professionals kind of about themselves and how they got to be where they were. Um, and our students always love having one access to national NASA professionals, but hearing from them, you know, when I was a freshman, I had no idea what I wanted to do. <laughs> and then I happened upon something and here's how I, you know, got this or you know, students ask, well, how'd you get a job at NASA? Or, you know, how did you climb your career in NASA? So you guys get a chance to hear about that from NASA. You get to interact and ask them your own questions. 
Um, hopefully there'll be a, a lot of time and you'll have the chance to say, well, I'm kind of thinking about this and this, what do you think? So um, in that fall webinar, you'll um, all hear from um, one or more people from NASA. Um, by the end of, of the, the calendar year, so by the end of December, um, we want both scholarships to also apply for a NASA internship. Um, we do this for a few reasons. One, we want you to be aware that there are these amazing scholarships with NASA. And then two, we want you to get comfortable with applying for internships. So like us, they have this online system and a few questions. And then you kind of get to click through and see like all the different types of internships that NASA has to offer that maybe you didn't even know that they did. Um, there is for these like a 3.0. And so if you find them intriguing and you're at a 2.8, you still have time to like maybe by your, you know, your junior, senior year to get your GPA up to, to potentially earn a scholarship or I'm sorry, an internship, but like you never know. And I will tell you um, our last year's cohort of bridge and pathway scholars, I think there were three of them that got NASA internships that we then paid for for them. Um, so our scholars last year went on to get NASA internships. Um, we always have the, the right, you never know until you try. So three scholars um, just like you last year went on to do NASA scholarships. Um, here's where they slightly differ. So in the spring semester, um, that means starting next January, although a lot of students, I understand, took their winter break to do this. If you're a Pathway Scholar, we want you to research the NASA stuff in the spring semester. If you are a Bridge Scholar, we expect that you're going to do that by the end of the calendar year, right? So when we say, like, explore the Mission Directorate or Mission Directorate Research, we literally want you to go poke around all those links and find something or many things about what NASA is doing that you find interesting. So let's say you know nothing about NASA. It's your opportunity to go click through and find out who they are, or what they do. Or let's say you're really interested in computer programming. Um, it's your time to click through and figure out exactly what NASA does in computer programming. Um, and at the end of the, um, at the end of the academic year, you'll put like in, you, you'll report this to me by email. And then at the end of the academic year, you'll say, well, this is what I learned that NASA does. And this is what I think is really cool. And maybe it influenced your academic for career path. Maybe it didn't, don't know. Um, but it's your chance again to follow your own curiosity. Um, both opportunities will do a faculty interview. And again, um, I talked earlier about the importance of finding mentors um, in your academic life or career. So we want you to poke around um, instructors or faculty at your college or university and say, wow, this person's kind of doing something really cool and I'd like to learn about it or I'd like to learn about how they got there or... Um, maybe it's just an opportunity for you if you're shy or an introvert like I am to, to practice talking with people so that when you go for, you know, another scholarship or an internship or some kind of job interview, you're, you get more comfortable and more practiced in interviewing somebody. So that's why we have that as a requirement. And then um, for the Bridge Scholars, in the spring, you have a second webinar where, where you'll learn from previous scholars or faculty members, or again, NASA folks or professionals don't know yet, um, how they went about figuring out what they wanted to research, uh, how they went about getting their first scholarships and fellowships, how they got their first grant. So you get to learn a little bit more um, from a variety of folks about like how they went about bridging, right? That's why it's called bridge bridging what they're doing now into their next steps, um, funded or otherwise. Um, and then both um, will, of course, be required to submit a final paper. But again, don't panic. Um, it's pretty short. And it's just like, I like to call it more of like a reflection paper than a final paper. Um, we want you to talk to us about where your curiosity has led you. What did you discover? What did you find out about yourself? 
Um, what did you think was interesting? What did you not think was interesting? It's just your chance to kind of reflect with us um, what you learned over the course of the scholarship period. Um, so I'm gonna take a quick pause right now. I'm going to get into some other opportunities that we have um, with NASA and space and other funding. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and take a pause at this moment and see that at least for the STEM bridge um, or for the pathways, sorry, I'm trying to stop my share right now. If anybody has any questions at this time about anything I've presented so far, um, and you can come off camera or audio if you so choose. Um, again, if you are shy, you can also pop it into the chat. So at this time, does anybody have any questions about either of the scholarships? I have no questions. Okay, go ahead, Carly. I said I have no questions. Oh, no questions, okay. So I, I said everything perfectly clearly and covered everything. <laughs> Best presentation you've mind? ever had <laughs> for a Monday. <laughs> All right, well, if anybody's being shy or something does pop up, um, you can still put it into the chat. You can call me, you can email me. Um, any of those things are good options. Um, but in the meantime, I'll just go ahead and keep rolling and then I'll open it up for Q&A at the end again. So, uh, of course, all right, here we go. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen again. All right, can you all see my screen again? with the NASA internships? Yes, ma'am, I can. Cool, thank you, Peter. Okay, so Les, I was saying like, so as a requirement for these, we ask you to simply apply to the NASA scholarship. That way you get familiar with the system and see what opportunities are out there because you never know until you try. Um, and often what happens is um, NASA will want to pick up a bunch of interns and then they'll call us to fund them. And so um, the due date is usually March, 2023, but um, they start offering them on a rolling basis, typically sometime in like February to March. And the earlier you get in um, the, and the earlier we get some like a request from NASA, the more likely we are to fund this. Um, and I do want to let you know that the diversity of opportunity of um, type of student, what a student is studying, where they are across the state, like has value to us in terms of who we decide to pick up. So, um, you know, if I get like, we get like five engineers from NC State, like that's great, but we would rather see, you know, a science student from Pembroke, um, you know, uh, an, an engineer from Elizabeth City and, uh, you know, and so on and so on. Like, we don't want the same type of person. We want to expose all sorts of people to NASA and we want NASA to see the greatness that is our students. And so I want to let everybody know that if you think you're not going to be competitive um, just because students from NC State or Duke or something apply, I want you to know that that's not the case. Um, Last year, I think our interns were Fayetteville State, um, Winston-Salem, and I'm missing the other one, but it's just because it's Monday. Um, but so we're looking to fund students who maybe wouldn't have thought that they could ever have a NASA internship. So please consider that. Um, there's a few other opportunities we have open that I want to quickly touch base on. Again, if you are interested in studying to be an educator. Um, if you are studying what we call um, pre-service teachers um, and you are an undergraduate studying this, um, there is an amazing scholarship for you where you go on and you learn all sorts of different um, NASA modules. And at the end of it, we take you all to NASA Langley Research Center and it is extraordinary. 
Um, so that one is also open right now and it is also open on October 17th. So if you are interested in becoming a teacher or like an informal educator um, in a museum or at a teacher at any level, um, take a look at that. Um, if you are not, but you know friends who are, point them to that, it is amazing. Um, the team comp is also open. This is typically a grant that's led by like a faculty member or instructor. Um, and then we fund them um, to do like NASA rocket competitions or they build rovers and compete nationally with other colleges from all over the country. Um, so there's all sorts of really cool team competitions. And um, when we talk to employers, um, they often say that they're looking for students who have um, experience working um, as part of a team or being an executive on a team. So um, being part of a team and doing that as a student is critical. So if you're not sure if there's teams at your college or your university, um, now is a good time to figure out if there's teams that you can join. Um, those look great on the resume. Um, if you do one of ours, great. If you join any club or team, that's a bonus for your resume. Um, so then the next two, these are our big ones. So in January of every year, we release our undergraduate research scholarships and our grad graduate research um, fellowships. Um, so for purposes of this audience, our undergraduate research scholarships are eight grand. So let's say you've done um, this scholarship, like Bridge or Pathways, and you're like, wow, I never knew that NASA was um, how they built rovers on the moon or Mars or anything. And I had no idea that, you know, they used a certain type of programming on those rovers. I would really like to research and learn um, those programs so that I can go and like have a job in that arena. Like for, if you want to spend an academic year doing some in-depth research on something that really uh, drives your curiosity or will help you get a job, these opportunities are great for that. Or let's say, um, you know, you're really interested in um, monitoring health, right? You're interested in all these Apple watches and smart shirts and all these things that um, really help people monitor their health. If you're someone like in my family who have like diabetes and other things, and then you go and you research and you find out, um, not all the stuff that like NASA spacesuits have the technology in them and you think it's really cool. And then you wanna spend an academic year kind of learning about material structure or integrating technology into fabrics or, or other things like that's the opportunity um, for you to, to go on and do some bigger research. Um, if you're curious about the type of research our scholars have done in the past, there's two ways to figure that out. Um, one, um, you can go into our website and under news, you'll see all like tons of past posts about what past students have done or what they've been awarded, like all of our research scholars in any given year, like the titles of um, what they're researching um, and what institutions they come from. And then similarly, if you go on our website under events, you can see the past symposiums and there's some really cool like what we call like virtual posters or like five to ten minute presentations um, from our students in the past so you can learn about what research they've done and maybe some of those things will inspire you so these are like amazing scholarships um, if once you've kind of figured out a little bit more about what you've wanted to do and you're ready to do a little bit more in-depth space research um, so I was just talking about um, the symposium, and I want to let anybody that's out there right now know that we've already set the date for our symposium this academic year. It will be on Friday, April 21st. Um, it will be held at NC State University. We are sincerely hoping that it will be in person this year since we've had to cancel and or go virtual the last few years. Um, if you are a scholar, um, your um, admittance to the uh, symposium is free. Um, you're getting a scholarship that will hopefully pay for your travel, but if not, we can work that out too. Otherwise, students, it's a really, it's a really cheap um, conference or symposium. It's only going to be probably about 25 bucks to attend. 
Um, you'll hear from um, a keynote address speaker. In the past, we've had astronauts or people from the International Space Station or all of that. You'll hear about the research that um, other students are doing. Um, you'll hear about the work that some of our alumni are doing. Um, students have the chance to present posters about their own research, which if anybody knows in an academic setting, being able to present and explain the work you do is really important to um, getting any job like in an interview. So we let um, students do posters. Um, and then at the end, oh, oh, here's an example. This is uh, Danielle Berry from Winston-Salem. She did this great video. If any of you want to go find it and watch it, it was very fascinating. Um, and then the last panel of the day is um, careers in space. So we bring in people from the private sector, International Space Station, NASA, um, all of that. Commercial space, meaning sometimes like SpaceX or Sierra Nevada, uh, drone companies, um, scientific labs, I don't know, a lot of different people. And you get a chance to intimately at like breakout tables, interact with them and talk about careers. Um, so if you are interested in networking and meeting great people and learning interesting things and talking about interesting things, um, save the date for that now. And then um, look out for more information on social media and everything um, early in the next calendar year. Um, and so with that, we encourage you to follow us on the socials. We have the most amazing interns working with us on the socials to do things that I'm too old and dorky to do. Um, but you'll find information about like internships and scholarships, and fellowships and interesting space information and photos from the James Webb telescope, all this stuff. Um, if you just follow us on the socials, um, that's where you can find us. Um, and just a reminder about our website and everything else. Um, again, if you need to reach me, my contact information is at the bottom of those web pages. Um, you can follow up with me by email or phone, and I'm happy to answer any questions, um, again, that you might have. So I'm going to go ahead again and stop share now and see if anybody at this point has thought of any questions or whether or not, again, this is the most thorough presentation you've ever heard and any question you want has been answered. Anybody, everybody good? So I will, I, I will anxiously await all of your applications. Um, just so you know, uh, it's nothing to be intimidated by. It's just someone like me on the other side reading essays about what makes you curious and excited. So um, don't be intimidated, have fun, um, take them seriously. I will tell you this, last year we had more money on the table than scholarships we gave out. So in other words, we did not have enough applicants to give out all the money we had. So I like to tell students that as long as you submit a thoughtful, well, you know, thought out um, proposal, like odds are really good for this one. Um, so it's definitely worth the time to do it and submit because your chances are pretty good of receiving a scholarship. I'll give it a few more seconds, questions, thoughts, comments, concerns. Weather reports, everybody just really shy on this one? No. Yep, shy and tired. I know, I know. And so, God, why'd you have to do this on a Monday? I'm right there with you. I don't know why I scheduled it for a Monday either. But um, Friday was a hurricane and nobody showed up, so it's today. <laughs> Carly, you got anything? I saw you kind of go off. I was going to agree with Laura. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hopefully the thought of um, talking about something that made you curious and the thought of like three or 5,000 grand will get that energy going <laughs> just a little bit. And um, I'm looking forward to getting some exciting um, questions back. Some yeah, it, yeah, it definitely did. Um, and this has been very informative. Thank you for your time. Oh, it's my pleasure. All right, well, I look forward to seeing applications from everybody on this. And I wish you all the best of luck. All right, go get some rest and uh, tackle that week. Thank you. Y'all be safe. Take care, all. Bye. Thank you so much. Have a great day. My pleasure. Bye.